Hello, I'm Steve, and thank you for visiting the Patio Heat channel, where we provide visual concepts of infrared heating as well as tips for ideal patio comfort. Check out our patioheat.com website for sales and more information. Please tap that like button if you find this video useful, as it helps others find our channel. Now let's get heating. All right, so this is going to be a provisional uh, recommendation for this residential application. So um, let's go right into the dimensions that I received. So I received a few dimensions, and the only ones that I really received were this height here of 10 feet by, I believe, this uh, 14 foot, and then a 17 foot depth here. Now, there was a uh, angle over here that I'm not certain of, so um, I'm going to just uh, imagine that there is a 45 degree cutout here, and, um, also that this dimension here is approximately 12 feet to this edge over here also there are some i believe these are lights up here in the ceiling and so i have them at eight foot by eight foot centered and they're centered off of this main lamp which is centered in the space from here to here and then also from here to here this 14 foot uh, section uh, you can see there's some other dimensions over here that are just, again, provisional. Um, not quite sure what they are. And also we have this doorway that I saw that it swings out, but I don't know what the true dimension of the door is, as well as how far out it swings. Um, I also made a... Um, let's see if I have it in here. Uh, maybe it's... Here we go. So this door section that, you know, it can swing out further, obviously, and I have this um, uh, sofa here in the, in the way, so obviously it won't swing out, but uh, technically if it does swing out further, we need to make sure we are aware of that. All right. Um, also, I don't know what the true dimension of this uh, light is, um, so this is just something here provisionally again, and... Um, you know, what we really need is the overall uh, diameter of this lamp. Now, I know this isn't exactly the lamp that this customer has, but it's something similar to it, and that's what I'm trying to show here. So, all right, let's see if there's anything else. Also, we have this, it's basically a uh, seating area here for just uh, reclining, and I know this couch here comes further out to the left. I don't know how deep these couches really are, but... Uh, Let's go ahead and look at the uh, footprint that we can uh, manage on this um, application. As well as one other thing I don't know about is whether or not the ceiling here is on a slope or not. So I have it on a slope just based on the fact that I'd imagine the rain needs to, to drain off of it. So I have a three inch um, height over here, uh, taller than this 10 foot over here. So, all right, let me go ahead and turn that off and I'm gonna turn that door off. And what I'm going to recommend right off the bat is that we place a couple of 4, 000, or excuse me, 6,000 watt um, electric heaters. Now, the reason I'm choosing electric heaters is because this looks like it's going to be a aluminum uh, top. And you have to check with your uh, manufacturer whether you can just take some zip screws in here. And these heaters are about 18 pounds a piece, so each screw will take... Uh, one quarter of that weight and if that's doable with the manufacturer then you can place these heaters here um, the customer did main mention that they had some power up here but it looked like it was 110 uh, that 110 power source will not provide enough uh, will not be uh, sufficient for a 240 volt uh, heater um, so this is a, a 6000 watt 240 volt 25 amps each heater. They also mentioned uh, having a gas line in this um, post over here. Also, uh, gas heaters would be a lot heavier. They're about uh, 48 pounds each, and you'd still require two units um, minimum to heat up this whole space. So not quite sure if that would be um, advisable to hang it from the ceiling uh, on this application. All right, so let's go ahead and look at... Uh, so basically here you can see that I have the two units centered between these lamps or lighting and then um, I have it at the OEM bracket which is six inches, six inches of clearance above. If it's aluminum, um, I would still keep the clearance to aluminum because 
I'm trying to find that here. So because the fact that uh, aluminum does um, warp under heat and you'd want to make sure that you're not warping the unit. So I would go with the full uh, clearance, um, even though that's non-combustible. And then the clearance below, you can see that that's why I need that to mention uh, below the lamp here. Um, I need uh, 18 inches from this edge to any combustible um, and I don't want to penetrate the light or light fixture with any of the heat ray. So that's um, something else that you want to keep in mind there. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the, uh, I don't see any other issues with the exception of this door here again. So I got this door out further and you can see here that I'm just penetrating this door. If it's a wooden door, of course, we're going to have to move this a few more inches in, which would not be centered within these lights if, in fact, my lights are even placed in the right position. Um, so something to think about. Again, they're eight foot center to center. Maybe they're six foot. Maybe they're um, not quite far uh, this way. I'm not quite sure about that. So, but something you have to be concerned about that we don't penetrate that door here. All right, let's go ahead and look at the uh, footprint of heat. Footprint of heat is gonna be an infrared light wave. You can see here that um, we're getting a fairly good coverage. Um, we're missing some of this seat out here. You can see that we're not covering all the way to the edge of this uh, uh, covered section here. However, I think this might just be adequate for this um, application because I don't know that they actually want to heat out here um, further and if they did they would have to put a heater over here and then you'd have to make sure that the heaters level it cannot be placed on a slope like this from left to right let's say um, because what will happen is as you heat up the element uh, the uh, elements will start to sag downhill as they heat up they expand and as they cool they contract and as they contract they'll start falling downhill it needs to be uh, level at all times so if you did want to heat up this section you'd have to put an additional unit parallel with this um, 17 foot section here in any case I think this would be a fairly good application and um, I think they'd be happy with that so I hope this has helped. If you're looking for some assistance with your outdoor heating application and you'd like us to review your plans, send your information to designs at patioheat.com. I'm Steve, and again, please tap that like button. We don't advertise, we are not monetized, therefore YouTube will not promote our channel unless we receive your appreciation, and we thank you very much for that. Have a great day.